One day a little girl was drawing a picture and her mother said, well, honey, what are you drawing? And she said, I'm drawing God. And the mom said, well, you know, dear, how do you know what, what God looks like? We've not necessarily seen God. And the little girl said, when I'm done with my picture, everyone will know what God looks like. You see, each one of us has an image of God. And whether we relate more to the Father, the Son, or to the Holy Spirit, it's important for us to remember that it is three persons in one God. As Christians, we are unique different from the Jewish faith or the Muslim faith in that we do have a triune God with the three persons in one God. It's very hard to describe. If we were to ask that question, who is God? Our human language doesn't give us the ability to try to answer that. It's not possible for us to answer it because we don't have certainly that vocabulary, that ability of expressing to another or to someone who God is outside of just the vocabulary that we have. And you see, it's just like when a little child asks the question, well, you know, was, why is the sky blue? Or is a zebra white with black stripes or black with white stripes? Or how come the water comes in at the beach and then it kind of goes out, but the waves don't go the other way? They're all questions that we can answer in a very simple way. It's a mystery. So if you never, are, are never sure of what the answer to a question is, especially when it comes to a religious question, we can say it's a mystery, and it's okay for it to be a mystery. That's not really a word that we think of very much today. When we say something's a mystery, we think of a novel or watching like CSI and trying to figure out all of the pieces. But really a mystery is something much deeper than that. The mystery of our faith, the mystery of God, is called upon to draw us into a deeper relationship with God. So if we're asked the question, well, who is God in the Trinity? Can you explain to me the Trinity? Really, the only way that we can do that is by talking about the gift of relationship. It is the gift of the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, the unity that exists there, and the incredible love that exists there. We know the Father is the creator, the Son is the redeemer, the Spirit is the sanctifier. And we're drawn into that beautiful mystery because we don't have all of the answers. And that's why one day we all desire and hope to be with the triune Godhead in heaven is because maybe then and only then we'll have the answers. Maybe then we'll understand a little bit more about how there possibly can be three in one. Again, it's not something that our mind can appreciate or can understand. But what we do know is that there's an incredible relationship in that triune God, and we are drawn into it. We're drawn into it because, as we hear in the first reading, there's that gift of wisdom. Wisdom which was there before the earth was created, the mountains were formed, and the seas and the rivers began to move. That really before any of that, there was something called wisdom. And God sees wisdom in a personified way. We have to look to our imagination. And God sees wisdom off playing in the distance. God sees wisdom really in each one of us. He's gifted us with that. So one of those great links to God and to ourselves to help with that relationship is the gift of wisdom. Another is the beautiful gift of love. That as the Father loves the Son, and the Son loves the Spirit and sent the Spirit to us, as Jesus, as we hear in the Gospel, says that everything I have is theirs. Everything you've given me belongs to me, but everything that I have now belongs to them, to each one of us. That there's a self-pouring, there's a sacrificial love that Jesus gives to each one of us. And again, because he was human, we can relate to God in a better way because we know what God is like in the human form. And that is something that our mind can grasp, something that our mind and our actions can mimic and we can do by example. But so who is God to us is a question that each one of us really has to answer individually. It's something we have to look into our own hearts and think of how is it maybe that we come to know God, not because of what's here in our mind, 
but because of what we have in our heart. And ultimately, God wants us to be with him in the kingdom of heaven. He wants all of us to be saints. And I know we may find that hard to believe when we look at other people and we think, well, gosh, how is that person going to be a saint? Before we worry about how someone else is going to be a saint, we need to worry about our own selves. We need to worry about what's happening with us before we think about somebody else and how they're going to get to heaven. What about our own sanctification? What about our own gift of holiness? What about our own way in which we love others? Because as we mimic relationship on earth is the only way that we'll also understand it in heaven. You see, the thing is, is we identify with God because of relationship, because of who the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are to one another, but really it's also who are we to God? Well, we're his sons and daughters. And what does God want for his sons and daughters? Well, what do you want for your sons and daughters and your grandchildren? You want only the best. That's what God wants for us. He wants to pour out that gift of love on each one of us. He's laboring to love us. God is working so hard each and every day to love us, even with our imperfections. He's reaching out the Father, the Son, and the Spirit who created, redeemed, and sanctified us in order to be able to allow us to have an insight into that incredible mystery of heaven that we have the desire to be with him one day. So if you were to sit down this afternoon, maybe at our picnic, I think we'll probably have paper and crayons there. You can come and draw what God is to you. You can think about what is it that really in your own reflections, what is God, who is God to you? And just really pray about that and maybe have a nice conversation with him. Maybe tell him who he is to you. Because the only way that we really can develop a better relationship with the Trinity is by speaking with God. If we don't speak with God, if we don't know him, well then how are we ever going to know him one day in heaven if we haven't gotten to know him on earth? And I have the feeling that if we were to ask every person in this church today, you know, who is God to you? We'll each have a different answers. We'll all have a different response. And there's something very beautiful about that because that in and of itself tells us God is bigger than just one person. God is bigger than just one adjective. He would belong to each one of us in a very special way. So what are we going to do today as we celebrate the gift of the Trinity, the gift of God's love, to love him more with our whole heart, our whole mind, and our whole soul? And how are we going to love others in that image of how God in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit loves each one of us?